Now, to have the proper money mindset, we should know the basics of personal finance. And this morning's Personal Finance 101 will be tackled by a company that has experience and has expertise in managing people's wealth and finances, First Metro Asset Management Incorporated, or PAMI. Let's please watch this. What are mutual funds? A mutual fund is a pool of money put in by different investors that is professionally managed and invested in specific types of securities like cash, stocks, and bonds. Through a mutual fund, you can have access to many investment options. And you don't need much to start investing. With as little as 5,000 pesos, you can start investing in mutual funds. And because you can buy mutual fund shares every banking day, you can add to your investment as often as you want for as low as 1,000 pesos. Mutual funds are also liquid, which means you can withdraw your investment anytime you need it with no exit fees after six months. Investing in mutual funds also partners you with a fund manager who keeps track of market performance and makes well-informed decisions to take care of your hard-earned investments. Choosing the right mutual fund and fund manager is the key to fulfilling your financial goals. For more information, visit the FAMI website. Hi, I'm Ingrid Cruz, an edu creator at First Metro Asset Management. This video will enable you to review how you manage your finances, set your financial priorities, and gain the importance of a savings plan on top of your investment plan. To begin this, we will do a money health check. Doing this will enable you to refresh and restart this 2022. So, how financially healthy are you? In the next slides, I will be sharing a statement and all you must do is to read it and answer as honest as you can. Whether yes, you do it, or no, you don't do it. Let's begin. First is, I track how much I spend and what I spend on. Do you keep a list of all the things you pay? Do you know how you spend your income? Are you the person who knows every peso that goes in and out of your wallet? Second, I stick to my monthly budget religiously. Do you have a set budget every month? Do you follow your budget strictly? Next is, I pay my bills, including credit card bills in full every month. Do you know all of your due dates? Are you someone who prefers to pay on time to avoid penalty? Next, I keep three to six months worth of expenses for emergency situations. Do you have an emergency fund set aside? Are you financially ready in case you lose your job next week or had a medical emergency? Lastly, I know the value of investing. Do you invest your money? Are you on top with the different assets that are available today that will help your money grow in value and fight inflation? Now, are your answers mostly yes or no? If your answer to everything is a perfect yes, then it means that you are financially prepared and ready for opportunities to grow your money. However, if most of your answers are a no, then it's time for a restart. Now, how do we restart? Three things. Reassess, improve, plan ahead. Reassess your finances to spot where you are spending a lot, causing you a negative cash flow, or keeping you from paying your debts. You can do this by looking at your current cash flow. Here's an example of a cash flow. The most important thing here is to make sure that you are living within your means. When you total your expenses, it should be lower than your total income. Reassess your current cash flow. Are you living within your means now? There are several ways you can improve your cash flow and make it positive or at least even. First is you track your expenses. Make all of the list of your expenses you make monthly and reassess where you're overspending. Do you really need those subscriptions? 
Second, set a budget and keep a schedule to plan your expenses. Set a limit on how much you spend daily or weekly in accordance with your income. You can schedule your dates and dine outs on months when you expect extra money. Third is you can put your budget in envelopes. Okay, The envelope budgeting has been widely recognized and used and proven to work. Now it works simply. Using envelopes to store your cash for specific expenses. One envelope for rent and bills, another envelope for groceries and palenque trips, another envelope for non-discretionary like eating out, we can hang out, buying ones, and a lot more. And you are only allowed to use the money you have on each envelope. No ifs and buts. Fourth is set up your emergency fund. Emergency fund is money set aside for situations such as sickness, hospitalization, unexpected house, or car repairs. Improve your money health. You need to step up your game from just tracking your expenses and keeping a budget. You need to plan how you can pay your credit card debts in full. Check the schedule of your bonuses so that it may be an opportunity for you to fully pay those bills. Two moves you can do. First is build up your savings. Once your emergency fund is set, you can build savings for other financial goals you may have, whether for future travel or milestone purchases. Even if your contributions are small, get started. Your savings today done consistently can create a ripple effect for your finances tomorrow. Second, start an investment strategy. Most Filipinos learn the value of investing too late. And sadly, one of the reasons why is fear. Fear of investing. Fear of investing comes from not knowing what you're doing. So combat this by gaining as much knowledge or information as you can. Reading financial books, attending free webinars will do the trick. There are even free courses you can take online. Now, it's time to plan ahead. Here's the pyramid or hierarchy of financial security. One of the most important aspects is ensuring that you have emergency funds before investing. This is so if there are unfortunate events or emergencies that needed to be paid right away. You won't take it out from your investments. Note that investments are usually meant for a much bigger goal and for years from now on. In practice, emergency funds should be able to cover at least three to six months worth of your expenses. Once you have established your emergency funds, you're ready to invest. Now, remember, our financial journey is like running a course. It begins with clearing your path from obstacles like unnecessary spending. By knowing your income and where you spend it, you can begin managing your finances. That's why tracking your cash flow is the first step. Next, you want to make sure you have emergency funds and your debt is not pulling your income down. Now you want to define your goals. Here are examples of money goals you can set for the year. Earn your first million, a trip with the family in the summer, buy your dream car before the year ends, own a condo or apartment or a house, and make your first investment. What is it that you want to achieve and when? Also, you want to match the appropriate investment strategy to every goal. With the list of what you want to accomplish, define if it falls for short term, medium term, and long term. If your goal is to buy a car soon, travel, or get married, say in one to five years, this is a short-term to medium-term goal. But if you're aiming to buy a house or set up an education fund or a retirement fund or a business, these are usually medium to long-term goals which you plan to achieve in at least five years. Each goal needs to be matched with the right strategy. Short-term goal is for short-term investment strategy. This is putting your money in a safer but 
interest-bearing instruments like savings, time deposits, money market funds. For short-term to medium-term range, you can put it in RTBs, bond funds, or balance funds. For long-term, it's best to invest in balance to equity funds since they invest in stocks and stocks appreciate more in the long-term. Putting this in mind, the bigger the dream in terms of amount, the longer you should be investing for them. The longer investment horizon requirement, the more allowance for you to be aggressive. Short-term goal, conservative investing. Short-term to medium-term goal, moderate investing. Medium-term to long-term goal, aggressive investing. This is what we call the risk-reward trade-off. We call this matching your goal with the right time horizon and the right investment strategy. Remember, the right formula in financial security is paying yourself first. Attending the PSE Expo 2022 is your first step on the path to financial freedom. Wow, nakakayak naman that video <laughs> starting the Saturday with some emotions uh, there. But you know, it's very important. I've also been teaching FinLit to OFWs and we actually always start with some sort of meditation, you know, exercise to understand why at the very beginning are we even saving? Why are we even investing? And it always, always leads to something very, very personal, the batu for saving for our children's future, saving for our parents to be able to give back what they've given to us. So thank you so much, Fami, for that very, very personal uh, finance walk through, really personal finance device, something very linked to us individually. It's very good to learn new things, you know, technical perspective, but also just be reminded of the basics and be reminded of why we are even here this morning, why we're even trying very hard to manage our finance.